I'm Mr. Norton, and we're going to continue with our series in economic lectures here at Chandler Park. This one won't take very long, however, because it's a very short subject when we talk about production possibility curves. We also refer to those as PPCs. There may be some cases where you experience uh, in other economics courses, if you take them as you go on in your education, where they're referred to as PPFs, production possibility frontiers. It's the same concept. All they did was change the name. It really depends on what source you're looking at. So the first thing we need to figure out is that a PPC is an economic model. And because it's a graph that shows the different combinations of output that can be made between two, uh, between two products. Your textbook and many other textbooks that are created out there as far as economics goes likes to use two different uh, products. I have no idea why, but they're always guns and butter. What the two products are really doesn't matter. It's only meant to show that you have options that occur with two things. Okay, So we can see here in the one that I pulled up that this one is robots and corn. Now, if I'm a manufacturer, chances are I'm not making robots and corn. Again, the whole point is not to focus on what the products are, but to be able to work with the information that's in it. What we can see here is that if I were to go ahead and produce 100 robots, I could produce zero corn. All we have to do is simply use our math skills from, re from reading a line graph, and we would be able to tell that that's the case. Also, if I were to produce 50 corn, I would not be able to produce any robots. Now points A, B, and well, there aren't any more that are labeled, show different combinations too. Like for instance, with point A, we have 90 robots and we have 20 corn. We can use this example to demonstrate opportunity cost as well. Because in this case, if I were to ask you, what is the opportunity cost of going from the point that says 100 robots and zero corn to a point of production that is at point A, well, we know that we had to give up something in order to gain something else. And what we gave up is going to be our opportunity cost. In this case, in order to gain 20 corn, we're going to lose 10 robots. So once again, if I ask you what was the point, I'm sorry, what was the opportunity cost of moving from the point where we produce 100 robots and zero corn to where point A is on our graph, the answer would be 10 robots. Let's do another example. Let's see what our opportunity cost would be to move from point A to point B. At point A, <clears throat> I have 90 robots and 20 corn. At point B, I have 70 robots and 35 corn. Now, I clearly did not give up corn. So what did I give up in this situation? My cost has to do with robots. If we go back to the math, I had 90 at point A and 70 at point B. My opportunity cost is going to be 20 robots. We can reverse that situation too to continue to go with opportunity cost. In this situation, what would be the opportunity cost of moving from point B to point A? In this case, I'm gaining robots, but what am I losing? I'm losing corn. So how much corn exactly am I losing? Well, at B, I had 35, and at A, I have 20. So to go from B to A, I have an opportunity cost of 15 corn. Now there are some other terms that you're going to need to know when we look at a production possibility curve. Now the ones that we've looked at so far, the only thing we focused at is what your output is. Now anything that is along the curve, as long as we're talking about a production possibility curve, is going to be referred to as efficiency. Efficiency is the goal for all businesses. That means that you're making the most that you could possibly make given your certain circumstances. Now there are some other things that we want to make sure that we're aware of too. There are places on our PPC that we refer to as production and possibility. That would be anything above the curve. That means anything beyond it. Why is it impossible? Because we've already shown with efficiency that that's the most we can make. To be expected to make more than that is impossible. Now there are some scenarios in which we can meet those areas beyond the curve of efficiency, but those would have to do with changing things such as 
my four factors of production. If I were to increase any of my four factors of production, then that means that I would have a new possibility for efficiency. The same thing is true when we talk about a reduction in any of the four factors of production. What would happen is the curve would actually get smaller and would shift to the inside. We'll have a graph on that a little later to try and demonstrate that though. Now, given the graph that we have with efficiency, any point of production that's underneath the efficiency curve is called underutilization. What that means simply is that we're wasting resources and that we're not making as much as we possibly can. So let's go into that graph that I had mentioned earlier. PP serves can change to and why. Once again, we see here we have B being our original PPC curve, but we have two other curves as well. One that is basically, Q, I'm sorry, one that's QP and one that is SR. The SR one is a result of a reduction of factors of production. Think of it this way. If all of a sudden I reduce the amount of resources you had or I reduce the amount of labor you had, could you make as much as you could before? Absolutely not. That's why we have a curve that is smaller and shorter to the inside. Anytime we have a reduction, as far as we're talking about with graphs in this course, to reduce or get smaller is to move to the left. To increase or get, I'm sorry, get larger is to move to the right. That's some information you'll need to know when we get into supply and demand curves. Because when demand increases, those curves will move to the right. We'll have a brand new curve. And when those, uh, when those demand curves decrease, there'll be new curves that are sent to the left. And the same thing will be the case with the supply curve. So hopefully you have a better understanding of how supply curves, excuse me, supply curves, how PPC curves work. Um, they're not too difficult. Um, the one that, the part that students tend to have more of a struggle with is just figuring out the opportunity cost. But if you take an approach similar to how I did with the math earlier, they're actually really easy to figure out. Anytime that I ask you or anyone else asks you to figure out opportunity cost, as far as a PPC curve, the very first thing you want to do is determine what the quantities were that were involved with the, two, with the point that's in, that is the original point. And then you figure out with the new point that you're moving to what the quantities are involved there. Whatever it is that got smaller is going to be your opportunity cost. So hopefully with those tips, you'll have an easy time figuring out what PPC curves are and how to analyze the data within them.